acknowledge as a country that as much as white supremacy manifests, manifests itself in dangerous and deadly acts of terror, it is perpetrated by what is too often a willful ignorance or dangerous tolerance of its presence in our society. Powerful words from presidential candidate Cory Booker, and then came this from Beto O'Rourke just a few moments ago. You've been very clear that you believe the president is a racist. Is the president a white supremacist? He is. He, he, he's also made that very clear. He's dehumanized or sought to de dehumanize those who do not look like or pray like the majority here in this country. He said, I wish we had uh, more immigrants from Nordic countries because those from Haiti bring AIDS. Those from Africa come from shithole nations. Um, he's been very clear about who he prefers to be in this country and who he literally wants to keep out with walls and cages and militarization and torture and cruelty. And, and again, we in El Paso have borne the brunt of all of that, but we in El Paso are standing up to all that right now and I've never been more proud of this community than I am at this moment. Elise. I want to focus in on what Senator Booker said about willful ignorance. Mm. I hate that it had to come at such a price, and I hate that all the families and communities are having to suffer the price, but we can't be willfully ignorant any longer about the impact of systemic racism within our country and how Donald Trump is torquing up the racism that is there to begin with. I'm not saying Donald Trump created it, but he's giving it a turbocharge. And I remember during the summer of 2016, or was it 2015, when, a, when the horrible massacre happened at that church, and it was the Republican primary. And the big question for candidates was, ah, are you going to decry the Confederate flag? Are you going to really go there? And everyone tiptoeing around. It's time for that moment to stop, and it right. should have stopped way long ago. Jason. You want to talk about moral authority? Cory Booker is one of the only politicians that they'll even allow to speak at Mother Emanuel. That's not just a place mm. that's a house of worship, but it's also where people actually die. That is what the country needs to say. Whether or not he becomes the nominee, it was powerful when he said, look, I'm not just here as a politician. I'm here to talk about the better nation that we can be. And what better place to talk about that than a place that rem demonstrates not just the dangers of white nationalism, terrorism, but that, yes, it did precede Donald Trump. And we have to have a presidency that will make sure these things don't happen again. Matt. So it's great that we've seen Beto O'Rourke and Joe Biden and Cory Booker uh, making these powerful remarks over the last few days. It, it shouldn't have to be just Democrats who call what's mm. obvious what right. it is. Uh, it, it's fairly amazing that you know, they're not the only ones that can tell that we have a racist in the White House. They're not the only ones who can tell that the president's remarks cause division and hatred and sow the seeds of violence. And so as you see all of these you know, Democrats who are running for president, as well as members of Congress and members of the Senate make, you know, make statements like this, you have to ask yourself again, as we have them all throughout this presidency, where are the Republicans? What is it that would allow them to stand up? You saw Ted Cruz and John Cornyn standing on the tarmac greeting uh, uh, President Trump as, as, he, as he came to El Paso. But when are they going to say it's enough? Cut it out. My constituents died because of this attack. Mr. President, you need to stop talking like the, the way you do about the, 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 the people of this country. You think they're ever going to say anything? It's truly amazing. We can name, you know, someone mentioned Rob Portman's name in one of the breaks, you know. You think of, it's amazing that there's not, it's not I'm, I'm not amazed at this point that there's not a, an outcry, a wave of Republicans standing up because they're so obviously hollowed out and corrupt and debased at this point that I don't expect anything like that. But it's not, it's not there's not even one. Right. Or two. Yeah. We called like, no, 30. Monday night no, before the special here, we called 30 to see if anyone wanted to be part of the conversation. There's about. no big national Republican, a Mitt Romney, you know, a Rob Portman, some one of these Republican senators who we thought was a mainstream conservative Republican mm -hmm. senator who would stand up in this moment and say, enough. Um, and, and, and go even further, because I know some of them understand the depths of the president's racism and white supremacy. I know, I know they understand it, and, they're, and they are, it's just astonishing. One of the most astonishing things of this era, and one of the things I think historians will write about most witheringly and most damningly about a lot of these people. You think anything shakes it loose? I mean, you had Betty O'Rourke there say this will happen again and again and again. I don't know. I've, 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 given, up, I've given up any predictions about the future, certainly optimistic ones when it comes to Republicans. But, but this, is, this is an inflection point. No, 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 you know, no doubt. This is an inflection point, not just for the country, but for the Democratic field. This is such a dark week. The, the candidate who emerges is going to be the candidate who can show us the, the brightness, the light out of this, these extremely dark times. 
All right, I want to thank all of you guys, all my guests for the hour. Jason Johnson, Elise Jordan, John Heilman, Raul Reyes, Matt Miller, Jacob Sobaroff, and, and all of his guests there in El Paso. That does it for our thanks to you for watching. I'm Nicole Wallace, MTP Daily with my friend Chuck Todd. Starts.